Good morning. Welcome to Fort Washington Collegiate Church. We are a multicultural, multiracial, open and affirming church in the midst of Washington Heights. And this morning, we want to welcome you from wherever you are, from your kitchen, from your living room, to our worship. During this time when we must stay apart, love is what keeps us together. Let us worship God. Friends, this morning we will be joined during this worship service by the Council of Conference Ministers of the United Church of Christ. You will hear voices and see faces from conference ministers all the way from Maine to Wisconsin to Hawaii. Let us welcome them to our worship. Let us worship God. Amen. When we feel isolated and alone, oh God, your word comes to us. When we face an uncertain future, the Bible reminds us. When we are scared and anxious, we hear your whisper. We come to this time of worship remembering the promises of our God, strengthened in hope and saturated in holy love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing my Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior. Lord,
Good morning from the middle of Maine, Fort Washington Collegiate Church. At this time, we take a moment to share God's peace with one another. Right now, you can... Text a friend and let them know you're thinking about them. Share this video on Facebook. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Invite your friends to join us in our worship service today. Let us digitally pass the peace together. May the peace of Christ be with you. And I'm Evie, and we're here to bring you this week's announcements from FWCC. Right after today's service, from around 11.40 to 12.30, you're invited to join our Zoom Fellowship Hour. Look for the Zoom link in the description of this video or on the church's homepage. See you there. On Tuesday night at 7.30, join our music director, Chris Whitaker, for the Community Choir Music Class. The live stream class can be found on Facebook and YouTube. On Wednesdays at 8 p.m., join us for our God Talk Bible study on Zoom. Will God talk to you or will you talk to God? Be there to find out. As always, you can find all of the latest videos and resources for kids by visiting the church's website and clicking on the tab called Children and Youth. And now we are interrupted. Uh, we are interrupting this broadcast for a special announcement. And now, kids, do your parents seem like they need a rake, like a play date? Well, we've got you covered. This Friday at 8.30 on Zoom, there will be a parents' happy hour with Zeke and Phil. Trust us, they need it. Thank you, Luke and DB. For a full list of events, including the Zoom links and call-in numbers they just mentioned, visit the church website and click on the tab that says Connect. And if you want to get involved in our online services, email Chris at the address below to learn how you can be part of our weekly online worship service. Finally, as you know, this pandemic is inflicting great pain on working families, communities of color, prisoners, and so many others who were already marginalized. As a church community, we have a responsibility to advocate for all those whose lives and livelihoods are at risk. To let us know if you need support and to find out how you can take action with us to demand a just response to this crisis, please visit our website at fortwashingtonchurch.org support. And now, let us continue with the worship. I hear the rolling thunder. 
Hello, Fort Washington Church. It's good to see you. I've been having a really good time shooting some of my videos outside, and some people were asking to see more of where I'm living. This is the house, oh, this is the house that I'm staying in. This is my parents' house that I grew up in, and this is my dad's truck. And out here, sometimes it's dangerous. I have to wear a headscarf to keep the sun from getting on my head, and we have cactuses, real, live, huge cactuses. I wanted to bring you out here today so I could show you. Look at how big that sky is. Our lesson this week is about God's steadfast love. And in the ancient world, they used the image of the sky to talk about how God's steadfast love would never end, just like the sky never ends. Sometimes it can be hard to see the whole sky from in New York City. At least that's where it was in our apartments. So, I thought I would share with you the sky out here. The sky that never ends. Just like God's love. Miss you, Fort Washington. Talk to you soon. Friends, the next voices you'll hear after the scripture reading are the voices of the Southern New England Conference Ministers. Reverend Don Remick serves as Conference Minister for Innovation. Reverend Marilyn Kendricks serves as Conference Minister for Discipleship. And Reverend Ken Salati, who was my Conference Minister for many years in Connecticut, serves as Conference Minister for Justice and Finance. Let us welcome them to our digital space. Let us hear God's word. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, verses 22 through 31. 
It captures the story of when the Apostle Paul was in Athens and was pulled into giving an impromptu speech in front of the elite council called the Areopagus. These folks were known for their intellectualism or their wannabe intellectualism. And so in this speech, Paul is trying to match them. He's trying to meet them on their playing field. So you've got to hang in there and listen as carefully as you can, because there's some real gems in here. Let's get into the story. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, the one who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is God served by human hands as though anything was needed, since God gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth and allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they should live so that they would search for God and perhaps find him, though indeed God is not far from each one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are God's offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. Well, God has overlooked the times of human ignorance. Now God commands all people everywhere to repent because the day has been fixed on which God will have the world judged in righteousness by someone appointed. And in this, God has given assurance to all by raising this one from the dead. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God among us, thanks be to God. Amen. God has indeed reordered our world. The way we were before seems so long ago, and we find ourselves living in a new reality. We have discontinued practices that we thought were unchangeable. It turns out that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. I can remember a Sunday practice from my childhood. Many Sundays after church, my mom and dad would load us kids up in the front and we would go for a Sunday ride. No destination in mind, Daddy would just drive. Invariably, he would get lost somewhere on Long Island. In my younger years, I would cry because I was afraid that we were lost. But my dad would say, you are not lost. As long as you are with mommy and me, you can't get lost. As I grew, I came to understand that and find comfort that no matter where I was, if I were with my parents, I could never get lost. In these long weeks, when we've been cloistered in our houses, many of us have been feeling lost. We went into this time of stay safe, stay home, fearing deep in our hearts that being physically separated from our faith communities would cause us to be separated from God. Fearing that if we were not in our favorite pews, that we would not be able to find God. We thought we needed our church buildings, our beautiful sanctuaries to feel God's warmth enveloping us in love, but it turns out that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. 
Friends, it's not only the separation from our buildings that has us feeling off kilter. We've all been living through a nightmare, an international nightmare. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us live in fear of losing loved ones. Some of us are suffering from the virus and some of us are suffering from lost income because of the virus. Some of us are bored from too many days looking at the same walls. And some of us are forced to work at home while some of us wished we could stay home and not work endangering ourselves and our loved ones to keep essential businesses open for the rest of us. Some of us, the heroes among us, are working in hospitals and nursing homes, working as EMTs and police officers and firefighters and orderlies, many of whom are overwhelmed and overworked, trying hard to keep people alive. Some of us don't know if we can continue to watch as more and more people get sick and die. This is indeed a long national nightmare. Those people whom Paul encountered in Athens, they had some inkling that there was a God whom they did not know. Paul had observed as he walked around their city that they had objects of worship in their shrines and that among them was an altar to an unknown God. He understood that these were people hungering for an experience of the holy. And so he told them about the one true God. And he let them in on the secret that the one true God could not be confined to their temples. No, he shared with them that the one true God was not far from each of them, not far from each one of us. He let them know that in God we live and move and have our being. As Paul told them about Jesus, how he'd lived and how he died, but most importantly, he shared, he told them about how he had been resurrected. He shared with them the saving balm of the good news, that we are a resurrection people. He told them, and he is telling us still, that death does not have the final word. We are living in a time when we need to remember every day that we are a resurrection people. These are indeed hard times that we're going through. There are times when it seems as if we have been abandoned by God. But Paul is right here speaking to us from 2,000 years ago. The Apostle Paul is reminding us that no matter how bleak the time, God is still Emmanuel, God with us. He's reminding us that we are God's people and no amount of sheltering in place can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No tiny microbe can take away from us that truth that we are a resurrection people. You know, when I grew up and had children of my own, we would sometimes take those Sunday rides after church and we would purposefully turn down streets that we'd never been on. We would jump off of the interstate at an exit that we'd never taken before. This was before GPS, and we would always get lost. We grown-ups had to look to the sun for direction and keep turning until we found a familiar street or a business that let us know what town we were in. But in the back seat, our children just looked out the windows, not worried about a thing because they knew that no, they could never get lost while they were with us, their parents. Friends, we are in a difficult time right now. We feel lost and afraid, afraid that nothing will ever be the same. Nothing will ever be like it was before. We've also learned so many things in this time. The most important thing we've learned is that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. We've learned that no matter what, in God we live and move and have our being. Things may change. God doesn't. We can never get lost. 
We have Jesus as our guide, and God is the foundation of our lives. We have the Holy Spirit filling us with such love that it just has to spill over onto others. Things change. God doesn't. Things change. God doesn't. Things change. God doesn't. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us pray for you. We are especially blessed this morning to have leading our pastoral prayer none other than the Reverend David Gajewski, our conference minister here in New York State, who has been blessing us with his presence and, and sharing with us in our worship. Friends, I invite you at this time, write the petitions and prayers that you would like us to pray for in the comment section of whatever video you're watching, and also for your prayers and petitions. Speak them aloud wherever you are and say their names upon your heart. Let us pray. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy love, like the beautiful blossom of the lily, the joy of Easter seems to fade so quickly. Its brilliance buried by the withering words of a daily digest of news and noise that seems not to care that you have reordered the world. The wonder of a world made new seems crushed by the urgency which viruses and vitriol would voice as the daily ritual of remembrance. How easy, O oh Holy One, to re-enter the tombs of our own making and those rooms fashioned by our fear and our fatigue. So grant us the gift of noticing that lies just beyond the fading flower of every yesterday. Refashion our focus on your surging strength, your promised power, yearning to take center stage in our lives. Like the unopened bud that awaits the beckoning power of the sun, open our hearts to your Holy Spirit already around and within us, that we may be readied, renewed, and blossomed into the beauty for which you have created us in Christ all along. Yes, Holy One, renew us and your whole creation, that we may be signs of your resurrection love in word and work throughout the world. May it be so, may it be so. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Creador nuestro, que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdonas, perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Y no nos dejes caer en tentación, mas líbranos de todo mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Friends, hear the words of Jesus. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. As faith leaders in this working class and gentrifying neighborhood of Washington Heights in New York City, we have counseled countless family members as they confront this impossible choice. Do we put food on the table today or do we pay the rent on the first of the month? And it breaks our hearts 
every time we hear these words. With 93,000 people living without homes across the state of New York, unemployment at levels not seen since the Great Depression, and a housing crisis of unprecedented scale knocking at our door, this is not a time for half measures. We, the pastors of Fort Washington Collegiate Church, along with members of our church's social justice task force, urge Governor Andrew Cuomo to cancel rent, utilities, and mortgage payments for the duration of the COVID-19 crisis. We believe that this is the only way that our society can faithfully live up to our God's command to care for the least of these among us. What can you do? There is one thing we can all do right now as a community to show support for this cause. Just as you see in the photo being displayed on the screen right now, we invite you to take a picture of yourself with the words hashtag cancel rent at NYGOV Cuomo. Post it on your social media profiles. Be sure that you tag both the governor and us and send it to us at parish-administrator at fortwashingtonchurch.org. These photos will be compiled and shared in one big collage on social media on May 22nd. Together, we will show the world what it means to be a church with love on the move. And we invite you, people of faith and conscience, to join us in demanding that the governor take action today. At 2 p.m. on Friday, May 22nd, hang a big banner out of your window with the words cancel rent written in bold print. Lean out of your windows, bang your pots and your pans, and raise a mighty ruckus. People of New York, let us show the world what it truly looks like to be in solidarity with the least of these and with one another. To live out the command to love our neighbors and to emerge from this dreadful crisis as one without leaving anyone behind. Visit us today at fortwashingtonchurch.org support to see how you can get involved today. Hi everyone. Hi for Washington Collegiate Church. Um, I'm Joanna Garcia and I'm saying hello on my behalf as well as my family. My family's behind the camera. They're a little camera shy. Um, and I'm here to tell you today that I miss you a great deal. Um, I miss uh, being in our place of worship, um, but I know that our work uh, continues even though we are apart. And it's what I love about Fort Washington Collegiate the most, um, that we uplift everyone's voice. We are from different backgrounds. We are at different points in our spiritual journey. Um, and we show love on the move and we prove in the world what that looks like, whether it be about lifting issues of LGBT, women's issues, social justice via via housing, helping each other in this difficult time um, is something that continues in our ministries. And that's what I love most about Fort Washington Collegiate Church. And I can't wait to be um, in the same space as all of you. Um, but in the meantime, I ask you to continue supporting our ministry's work. Now is the time in our service where we ask you to give as you are able. There is a link below. There's also a link in the video description. And let me just say that we are grateful for any gift, small or large. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and we will now receive your offering.
Let's give him for what's been shared. Let us sing as one body. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures hear the Lord. Praise God above all heavenly hosts. Creators, Christ and Holy Ghost. Friends, as we have gathered in diverse places and spaces today for worship, we offer you this closing prayer. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Siblings in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we are one body united across time and space, walking in the calling, in the anointing, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are one body sharing our hopes and dreams for the kingdom of God being salt and light in these days. And as one body, we leave this virtual space united in love, united in hope, and united in our commitment to serve God, to serve our communities, to serve the world, and to love each other. Go therefore, having received the blessing of the living God, who in love created you, the blessing of the risen Christ, who in love redeems you, and the blessing of their Holy Spirit, who continues to abide with and brood within the body of Christ and is the lifeblood of the church that we love. Because you are blessed, become a blessing as you proclaim the love of God in word and deed to all the ends of the earth. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. We're so happy we could be together at a time when we must remain apart. Please know that we are praying for you, that we are in support of you, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace and blessings.